Brad, 11th, 6th, 6th and 4th, so it's 2024, the moment of truth? Well, uh, 2024 for me is going to be a big season for sure. Like we just said, you know, the trajectory is on its way up. 11th, 6th, 6th and 4th. So I have no doubt we're going to do better than 4th. Um, last season was great at times, but extremely difficult on other days too. I felt like we had more in the pocket and we could have achieved more. So it's always good to go into the off season, we're still hung well, really hungry and wanting to achieve a lot more. And that's how I felt this year. So for me, it's awesome to be starting 2024 and looking forward to getting back on the bike. 10 years now with KTM. Tell us some of the reasons why this relationship has gone on for so long. What's been the reason for creating that special blend with the group? Basically, it's been 10 seasons I've already been with, well, it's going to be my 10th season. I've been racing for Red Bull KTM Factory Racing, and it's been an amazing journey. Um, you know, we have, we have had great times together. We have had days which have been amazing. We've had days that have been super tough and times that have been hard, but we've always stuck together and we've always had the same goal in mind. And so I think we fit really well together. But yeah, I'm so happy where I am. And now the only thing left is to to try and finish the job off in MotoGP. How would you say you're different to the 19-year-old Brad Binder 10 years ago, both sort of personally and professionally? Obviously, I think I've grown up a lot since, <laughs> since then. Obviously, I have a lot more experience now. I understand things much better. I think I'm quite a lot calmer for sure. I uh, understand what I'm doing and how to go fast rather than just try and uh, go crazy and see what happens. You know, if I look back and uh, I think well, to see where I am now, 10 years ago, I think, uh, you know, I would, would be super stoked if I could uh, look into the future back then. So I'm really happy about that. But like I said, there's a lot of work still to do and uh, let's try to finish the job off. You're going to have 44 races next year. Give us an assessment of how tough 2023 was physically and mentally. And do you feel the preparation and the changes you made for last season will you know, help you for this year? I feel like 2023 for us was a breakthrough year. You know, I think things were very static for us 2021, 2022. And then last season, we made a huge step forward. The bike was way more competitive. We were fighting up front most weekends. We were always around that podium battle. Uh, managed to win a couple of sprint races. So I felt like that was a good step for us. For me, it was clear that we still needed to work in some key areas. But other than that, I was really happy because I felt like we were starting to starting to achieve or be racing more at the sharp end where we need to be. So that was great for us, but this season is where I think we can make the difference. What about you personally, Brad? I mean, how difficult was it to adapt to the new sprint format last year and then also face an enlargement of that program for this season? With our new, our new schedule over a weekend, it's so important to start strong already on a Friday morning because by the time Saturday comes, you know, you're qualifying Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon, you've got to be ready to race. And um, that's something I think we actually did much, much, much better than expected. The sprint races worked really well for us where I think I went into last season thinking that that might be the tricky part. You know, for me at this whole new schedule, I really enjoy it. I love racing and I'd rather race than have a a session just to go cruise around and check things. So I love the sprint races. I'm really happy to have the 44 races. For me, it's, it's great. It's what I enjoy. It's what I love doing and I'm all for it. Can you talk a bit about the respect that you have for, for the motorcycle, uh, but also for the whole team, the whole group of engineers behind it, because it's obviously it's a perilous sport, but then they're making something that's not only competitive, but also durable, reliable, dependable for you. Can you just talk about that sort of section of your profession? You know, I think MotoGP or bike racing in general, it's, it looks like almost a one man sport when you're on the grid and you're all lining up, but it's such a massive team effort behind the scenes. You know, in the box, the guys are, are working to find every last little bit back at the factory, the guys are working tirelessly as well. And it's actually so impressive when you sit back and you look at the bigger picture and you see all these things coming and all the updates and all the understanding behind it and why they're doing things. And 
you know, I, I love my team. I have the most incredible crew behind me I could ever ask for. And, uh, you know, all the guys are just, they all flat out all the time. We all have the same goal in mind and we're never happy unless we're on top. So not, not too often last season, unfortunately. Brad, um, on the track, it's incredibly tough, it's close and competitive. How do you kind of keep the respect for the rivals and the people around you? It must be, because you have an enviable lifestyle. Fans see you, they see what you do, they see the rewards it can bring. But how do you sort of still find the rapport with people to be able to go and say, like have a barbecue together or just to be able to hang out post-race and talk? How, how is that dynamic? I don't really worry about it or think about it at all. I look at myself as a person that's quite okay on a motorbike. I'm not bad at racing a motorbike, but other than that, I'm uh, completely normal. So just like everyone else on the grid. So um, yeah, I really enjoy what I do. I love MotoGP and I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world to have this job. And other than that, I, I think I like more, well, just as much as anybody to go hang out with friends, have a good time and, you know, go for a barbecue, hang out with the people and normal stuff. Is it quite easy for you to step outside the bubble, you know, to, to realize what you do for a job and, and your life and your passion? I mean, you said there you feel you're lucky. Do you get to a chance to appreciate that and to really realize it? You know, I think... Sometimes when things aren't going the way you, you want them to over a race weekend in particular, it's easy to kind of forget about how lucky you are and how grateful you, you actually need to be to be doing what I am doing. You know, I think MotoGP is, is a dream and you sometimes forget that, okay, you're where you are now and you want so much more and you keep striving and fighting to get there but you've come a long way too. And if you look back, like we spoke earlier, 10 years to now, it's uh, quite a difference. So it's crazy how things can change. Of course, for me, I, I uh, have two types of my life. I find that when I'm in, in Europe and racing, I'm super professional. I do everything extremely well. I try to sleep well, eat well, do everything properly. Whereas I find it really important to have a couple of weeks in the off season, you know, over December to just really sit back and, you know, just do whatever I feel like doing. Just try to forget about bikes completely. And after five or six days, you start to realize how lucky you are to have this job again and how you're ready to get back because, you know, it's, so, so, it's such an exciting sport and exciting life. And everything we do is for ourselves. You know, you train hard, you get more, you do something better, you find something new, you know, it only improves and you can just keep building from there. So it's something that I really enjoy and it's a life that's the only real life I know and uh, enjoy. Brad, can you explain to fans who see Q1 and Q2 split by milliseconds? I mean, what's it like to live in that those kind of parameters? Because it's barely comprehensible. Uh, also, how do you get back to the pit box and think, well, I need, you know, less than a tenth to be able to make this step. I mean, it doesn't seem quite understandable. How do you work it out? For me, when you, it's happened, I don't know how many times over my MotoGP career where you've come in and you're in 11th position. So you just missed the cut and you 0.3 to first. And you know over the lap, oh geez, I missed this apex or I was too deep on the brakes in that corner. And then you like, you know exactly where that time was. And you know, okay, I could have done it, but this is what I did wrong. And those are the good days. The bad days is when you ride and you felt like you do everything perfect and all of a sudden, oh, damn, I'm 11th or 12th. And, you know, you, you're you looking for that last little bit. You know, 0.3 sounds like nothing, but when you need to do that lap after lap, it's super hard to find. And nowadays in MotoGP, it's crazy how close things are. And uh, I try not even look at the screens because... When you see the gaps and stuff, it's just, you know, you need to go faster. Even if you first going into your last run, you could land up in the Q1. So you need to improve every single session because everybody is. So for me, the biggest thing I learned this season was you have to make every single lap count and use every opportunity. Otherwise, there's a very good chance it's not going to work in your favor. Lastly, we talk just about 10 years of Red Bull KTM factory racing, but it's been a whole career of racing and competing. 
where does that kind of instinct come from, do you think, within you? I mean, how does it keep enduring? How do you come back year after year and still have that same urge? It's something, again, something that's quite unusual for most people to understand. Racing's been my entire life. Since I was small, that's all I've ever really loved and enjoyed. And it's what I like to do. And especially when you have time off, you realize how much you enjoy it and how much you really want to do it. So. For me, it's, it's always been something that I really enjoy the whole process of what I do. I, I love the preseason. I love the training, the, you know, getting out on your bicycle stupid early in the morning and, you know, having a gym in the gym session in the afternoon, trying to get the bikes ready to go riding, like all of that stuff is stuff I really enjoy. And yeah, for me, it's just really trying to improve just get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better to try and get to the end goal, which is obviously to be a world champion.